Hello, 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 dear friends. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How are you doing? How are you doing? How was your day? I know it's evening now, see? The sun has gone down. The evening has set in. But when you see this, it could be in the morning. I don't know what time of day that you'll see it, but I pray that the Lord has been with you in your journey and you feel his presence amongst you. Well, it has been our practice to read out of the lectionary. We are in the 11th week of ordinary time, the 11th week. And uh, we are going to read from the lectionary as we have been doing. Um, I, you know, this is a good word tonight. This is a really good word. So we're going to be reading 1 Samuel 15, verse 34. Then it goes into chapter 16, verse 13. So it is 1 Samuel 15, 34 through 16, 13. You have that? Okay. When you have the word of God, say amen, 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 amen. All right. So let us read it. And then we'll do some ponderings because that's why we come to the rest stop. We come to the rest stop to read the word of God, to ponder the word of God, to rest in the word, stop in the word, get some revelation in the word, settle ourselves in the word and allow the Lord to speak, right? So here we are, First Samuel, uh, and it is chapter 15, 34 through 16, 13. Amen. Amen. And it reads thusly. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house at Giba of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Aminadab and made him pass before Samuel and said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shama pass by and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, 
the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Rama, the word of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. It's a good word. It's a good word. You know what? God's, all of God's word is good. This is a good word. What do we take away from this tonight? There's so many takeaways that we have. Of course, we've always, we've, we've preached on this. We've taught this in Sunday school. We know about the anointing Right? We know about um, David being anointed and appointed by God. However, it takes a long time before he takes the throne. Whew. So what do we say about that? Right? And, and we've heard sermons about it. You know, how, how we, we wait for, we have to still wait it out. Even though God anoints and he appoints. You still have to wait it out. But you think about the trial and the situations, the sitches, right? I mean, these, these, are, these are life and death situations. We're talking about um, Saul and his crazy and all that David had to go through, but yet he still served, he still served. So uh, we, we look at this text and I'm telling you, there were a couple of things. I read it earlier. Um, and he even prepared a, um, some thoughts uh, for you on this. And, and I'm going to tell you, it, there's something about being rejected, being rejected by God, right? We, we see this several times here in the scripture, right? Um, uh, right here, 16.1, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve Saul? I rejected him from being king over Israel, fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. He says, I've rejected him. I've rejected um, Saul. Stop grieving over this. I I've rejected him. And here's the other one. Um, when when, when uh, Samuel goes into the goes in to, to, to anoint the one whom God has chosen. It's, it's on the, the first one, the <laughs> first one that, that comes in, um, he came in, he looked on Eliab and thought surely the Lord, the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or his height because I rejected him. That's things. I'm going to tell you the truth. When God rejects, right? But what happens when God rejects? Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Because what happened? After, after that one, then there was another one. He was rejected. Then there was another one. He was rejected. Why didn't, why didn't God just say to him, go, go to Jesse's house. There's the youngest one. He's in the with the sheep. Anoint him. Why does why does God take us through this this whole process of is that the one? No, nope, he's rejected. No, nope, that the one? No, nope, he's rejected. What do we need to learn? I just thought about that. What do we need to learn from this? 
how do we, how do we, how do we recover from God's rejection? Maybe we rest in that. Now, but there's another one here, another thing here that stood out to me. Is this, is this whole aspect about these brothers, right? So when, when I read this, I see the similarities between Jesse's kids and Yaakov's kids. You know those kids, Jacob's kids, right? Jesse, Jacob, the two J's, right? But David, he, he is the youngest. And then when we look at um, Joseph, story of Joseph, I'm take, not going there yet. The story of Joseph, right? Joseph and his brothers, tensions that were his brothers and how they despised him and angry because, you know, he was favored. He was a favored one. He wasn't the youngest because Benjamin was, was the baby. But, but he was despised by his brothers because he had a dream. And he told, he told his, his dad didn't like it either. And he, he told, his, shared with his family how he believed what God is, God is saying to him. And then he's, he's, uh, he's not rejected by God, but he's rejected by his brothers. And here we have the rejected ones that have to, Live through this. Now, here we go. Here we go. So after they're all rejected, <laughs> they have to sit there and watch the younger be anointed. Here it is. Um, verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. What is that? Why in the scriptures do we see the younger anointed in the presence of his brothers? What do we need to learn? What do we need to learn from this? Why is this in the scriptures? Why, why does a writer take the time to say in the presence of his brothers? There's something about there's something about the younger culturally historically being set in a place to rise above his brothers. That's interesting. It's very interesting. And, and we know that there's tension in both families, right? When we look at both families, you look at Yaakov, Jacob, right? Jacob and Joseph's brothers, throw him in a pit. They want to kill him, sell him off to slavery. And then, you, and then remember when um, David goes down Am I getting the stories confused? <laughs> but you remember when David, right? Um, David goes down to check on his brothers. There's some tension there. And, and then, um, and then and when he, remember when he kills Goliath, there's tension there. The, the brothers are like, mm, mm, yeah, kind of nasty, little you know, nasty. So what, what, what is God saying to, to, and I'm not talking about siblings necessarily. I know that they were, we're talking about being anointed in the presence of his brothers. But when those who are close to you, uh, when there's tension, even those who are close to you and those whom you love and, and you find yourself uh, in a situation, did David ask to be anointed by God? No, he did not. But he is the one whom God has chosen. And his brothers had to witness that. I don't know. What are the takeaways from here? Um, our takeaways can be 
God does look on our heart. Um, cause, cause in this particular, um, text, pericope of texts, we see that, um, that God is even showing Samuel, you know, in, in his act of, of anointing that I look, God says, you know, don't look at his appearance, his stature. It's the heart, right? So we know that. And we've preached about that and we've heard Sunday school lessons about that. But what is it that God is saying to us um, from this text? Let me take one more look. And, and you might have something that, that's come to your mind. Uh, so, so go with that. Whatever the Lord is saying to you, go with that. I love this horn of oil. I love that, the oil. And he anointed him in the presence of his brothers and the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he needed the spirit of the Lord, let me tell you, because what he was about to go through, whew, he needed the spirit of the Lord for that. But we see here, what can we say? Hmm. What do you want to rest in? What, what, what part of the scripture do you want to find yourself in? Maybe you're grieving something and God is saying, it's over now. How long? How long will you grieve this? It's time to move on. Whew, that's easier said than done. Maybe, maybe you've been on the, on the, on the opposite, on that end of rejection. Rejected. Hmm, here we go. Rejected by God and also overlooked by your own, by your own. Huh, here we go. Overlooked by someone who loves you and whom you love, and I'm talking about the uh, Jesse. Jesse didn't even consider David. He didn't even consider him. He, he's just, all right, y'all, get ready, get ready. It's like Cinderella, right? <laughs> Those other two would get, they, you know, shoving their feet in that, shoving their feet in that glass slipper. Ooh, it has a, ooh, you know. And then, and then Cindy's in the back, sweeping up. David's in the back, you know, bad, taking care of the sheep. What, what happens when those who are close to you now, you know, Cinderella, that's a whole nother situation. Her stepmother could care less about her. But here, here he is, a son of Jesse, overlooked. What happens when you're overlooked by the ones whom you love? And who's, who love you, but you're overlooked? Hmm. You, st you, you wait. That's what you do when you're overlooked. By, the, by by man, you're not overlooked by God. Ha, that's it. I'm going to rest and I'm going to stop in that. How about you? <laughs> wherever, wherever you find yourself in the word tonight, I pray that you would uh, you ask the Lord to give you a revelation. So let's go ahead and let's, let's rest and let's stop together in the word of God. Amen. Is that okay? Okay, let's rest and let's stop. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you that in you we live and we move and we have our being. We thank you, Lord, that your word is good, that your word satisfies our soul. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Lord, here it is. Help us, Lord, in our grief in our grieving process. 
Help us in our grieving process, Lord. That's number one. Um, as we see in this text that Samuel was grieving, she said, how long? We basically were like, move on. So that's the one, Lord, that I ask you to help us in our grieving process. Number two, help us even when we're rejected. Oof. Help us in our rejection. Mm. In our rejection, ooh, as hard as it is by you, God, help us, help us. We don't see any animosity in the text, in this particular text, from the ones who are rejected. So, Lord, help us. Help us to just keep it, kind of keep it moving. Keep it moving. And then, Lord, help us when we're overlooked by those who are closest to us. Um, when, we're, when we're not in their line of sight when when we're not in their their consideration when they think lower of us than you do god help us even in that to know that even though we're not considered by and i'm just going to say the ones whom we love the ones who are closest to us i don't want to say our parents but lord the ones whom we, are closest to us, Lord, help us um, when we're not considered by them, Lord, but you consider us. Help us, Lord. And then, Lord, after you've considered us and after you've anointed us and after you've appointed us, Lord, help us even to live out those things that we have to go through in order to see the promise. I give you praise and I give you glory and I give you adoration in Jesus' name, amen. You know, as I was just praying, what came to mind was um, Juneteenth, right? So so this this week, here in America, we're, we're celebrating um, Juneteenth on, on June 19th. And, and that is uh, something that we can apply even, can we apply this? I think we can apply it even to this, this word, this whole idea of two and a half years later, the slaves find out that they were freed. They were, they were free, but but they didn't know that they were free. They, they were still living up under the old rules and being taken advantage of. They didn't even know that emancipation had come. And in David's life, right? He's anointed, he's appointed by God, but still there's some time that, that had to play out until he came into the fullness of what God has called him to. Know that God is with you. And it may take some time, right? But emancipation is here. And so we celebrate. So on that note, I bid you farewell. And until the next rest stop, I'll see you all the next rest stop. But rest in this, rest in the assurance that God is with you and God is for you. God bless you. I'll see you all at the next rest stop.